You guys are working on the desk all the time. You have C tonight. Uh, what's the environment been like between you two? Have you spoken at all uh, yeah, ahead I, of this? Yeah, I saw him earlier today. He said he got in late last night. Uh, he looked big and strong. I was sizing him up. And, uh, uh, yeah, we did an interview this morning. Do you have to go back to work with him like, on a regular basis then as you guys are preparing for this fight? Well, we have a date set. Uh, he, he told me today that he just got assigned to a, a, a show that I'm working. I think it's two weeks from now for a, uh, a weigh-in show. Something you guys had discussed on the countdown show was that you don't think you're going to be able to take him down because of his footwork and just the the level of wrestling that he has. Uh, what have you put in thought as far as getting him to the ground at all, if possible? Well, uh, you know, I think that that may be the case. It's it's hard to say. I don't want to uh, eliminate that as an option and bring that into uh, uh, into my world. But um, yeah, he'll he'll definitely be harder to take down than a uh, guy with less wrestling experience. So. Uh, there's always, you know, plan B, and, and if you have to go to a plan C, I'm sure he's got one as well. But I anticipate that from a fan's perspective, it'll be a different fight than anyone has seen either of us have before. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, from a technical standpoint, I don't think that the, the techniques that he generally uses are going to uh, work as well on me. And I'm not going to just go run him down and, and, and keep him there either. So uh, I think we'll both have to go to go to some other holds. You said you, um, you, you can beat the Rashad, but you don't know how. Did you find a solution? No, I, I still don't know. But, you know, <laughs> that's not new. I uh, I never really know. You know, I, I, I look at some tape, and sometimes you see something where you go, I, 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 I got some skills to exploit this. And other guys you look at, and you go, well, oh, he's just a really complete fighter. I, I don't really know what's going to happen here. Um, so this isn't a, a, a new spot. But... Uh, but it's a tough one. I mean, I'm going to have to, you know, figure it out on the, on the fly. If you look back on the fight you had with Hua, I mean, did you imagine that you would submit him? And how do you feel coming into this fight, coming off of that? Uh, no, I didn't think I would submit him. I don't think, uh, I don't think Shogun was ready to go that night. I think he was uh, too much of a sportsman to make any excuses. Unlike most guys, I think he let me have my moment. But uh, uh, I don't think that was the real Shogun that I faced. But um, but I did have some good spots in that match. I also had some uh, uh, some things that, that, that I got to work on and make sure I don't do again. So that's what I take away from every match. You know, win or lose, there's, there's high points, but there's also uh, things that have to be worked on. Rashad has talked about going into this fight that he was kind of going through the motions, you know, a couple fights ago, the new Guerra fight, maybe even a little bit of the, the Dan Henderson fight. Have you ever gone through that, jail like where you've just kind of gone through the motions, kind of get burnt out a little bit? I mean, fighters that have been around as long as you guys have it, 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 I gotta imagine it's a grind to go every day like that. Yeah, it's it's a reality, but uh, you know the way that you cure that is to go through the motions, whether you feel like it or not. When it's when it's time to go to practice, you get in the car and you go to practice. Uh, I do it every day, twice a day. I do whatever's asked of me, whether I want to be there or not. And uh, uh, it's not fun. It's not a fun process at all. And uh, uh, but you got to go through the motion. So if Rashad was doing that, that's uh, uh, whether he knew it or not, he was doing the right things. That's why he's ranked number three in the world. How tough was it to see uh, your friend Dan Henderson the other night? Obviously, tough loss to Vitor. Um, Dan says he wants to continue. Do you do you see Dan still having? You know, I mean, I think a lot of people still feel he has fights left in him. That it was the first time he's ever been knocked out, and obviously Vitor's you know on a roll right now. Yeah, you know, and Dan. Uh, he could have won the Rashad fight. Uh, went to a split decision. One judge did think he won. He could have won the Machida fight. A split decision. One judge did think he won it. Uh, you know, as far as Vitor's uh, two words, um, surprised and impressed. Did you seriously consider retirement before the Shogun fight? Um, no. I've never uh, seriously considered uh, retirement. I know this isn't related to the fight, but you've accepted the Tough Brazil coaching job. Uh, what kind of challenges are you expecting from that and heading into Brazil primarily? Uh, you know, not a not a uh, a ton that I've really looked at. Um, as far as coaching goes, it's a it's a selfless position, and I've uh, always had great coaches. Um, my 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 coach now is is who I will emulate. He's a constant motivator. He's always on time. He works hard, and he cares. And uh, that's the same thing that I'll do. When I said I'll go coach these guys, I will be there primarily to, to coach and uh, to teach and to uh, keep them on track and remind them of their goals when they start to forget. Uh, 
after all that's done, uh, I'll deal with Vandalay. What do you plan to do about the uh, translation barrier? Will there be people, I imagine, that will be on staff or something to help out? Yeah, Vinny speaks uh, speaks Portuguese oh very well. Um, I consider myself fluent in, in, in Portuguese, but I mean, I'd have to sharpen it up to actually sit there and carry on a fast-paced conversation, but uh, uh, we'll do just fine, I'm quite sure. Can you share with, uh, Hoist came over and spoke to you briefly on the mat. Can you share with what he said? Uh, no, not really. Um, <laughs> Uh, Hoist is a great guy and, uh, uh, you know, a, a legend in the sport. It was, uh, uh, you know, I, there's very few guys when they walk in a room that have like an aura, you know, from my standpoint, and, uh, and he's one of them. And uh, I never get tired of seeing him. I get uh, excited every time uh, he's around, and I think I speak for, uh, for everybody in, involved in the sport, particularly uh, on a week like this with the 20th anniversary. How proud are you to be on this card? For this big event, the UFC and MMA in general. Uh, well, I'm I'm thrilled to be on it. I asked to be on it. I, I wanted to be on it. Uh, you know, as soon as I heard that it was announced and it was filling up, I knew George was going to headline it. Um, so the next best spot was a co-main event, and I I asked to get put in it uh, with Vandalay, and then I asked uh, uh, to get put in it with anybody but Rashad. <laughs> um, uh, but I ended up with Rashad, so I got half my wish. How did that come to be? Did anybody really tell you how the pairing or the, it was a Joe Silva, I guess? No, but. I was, I'll tell you exactly. I was doing a show in Indianapolis with Rashad. He was sitting right here and Dana sent me a text and said, uh, uh, hey, I need to talk to you. I want to announce uh, your next fight tonight on Fox Sports 1. And I said, uh, as long as it's at 205 and it's, and it's not Rashad, I'm in. And he wrote back, it is Rashad. <laughs> So I held the phone up to Rashad. We were on a commercial break and just let him read it. And I didn't say anything. I just held He read the whole thing. And then uh, a few minutes later, I had to do what's called a toss, where once I get done speaking, I toss to Rashad by looking at him, and I could feel him sizing me up the whole, the whole rest of the show. And then I felt myself doing the same thing to him. But, uh, uh, I mean, that's the way it goes. It's not, um, it's not the fight either one of us wanted. But we're both leaders within the, uh, the locker room with the guys in the back. We can't send an example uh, that you, you pick and choose your fights. You don't. You got to compete with everybody. We've seen in the past that two friends competing against each other can be kind of a boring match because no one wants to hurt the other one. Are you afraid it's going to happen on Saturday or? Oh, uh, I, I, well, we're both competitors first and foremost, but I never try to be exciting. I've won fight of the night a number of times, and uh, all I'm trying to do is win. Uh, it's a major cop out to say I'm I'm putting to trying to put on a show. Those are the things that guys like Vandalay Silva say. In, in in fairness, you know, they know they're terrible. They know they're going to lose, but it's don't fire me. I'm here for the fans. Well, I'm not. I'm here to get my hand raised. And I guess you don't go there uh, inside the octagon uh, in the mind that hurt, hurting Rashad. You don't want to hurt him, I guess. I, I'm going in to get my hand raised. I'm I'm going in to compete to the the best of my ability as hard as I possibly can for uh, however long the fight lasts. And and that's what I do every time. And uh, if excitement is a byproduct of that, great. But uh, I'm a competitor first and foremost. Are you still motivated by winning a title? Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, yes, pr primary motivation. So, I mean, do, do you feel, do you kind of need Wadman to win against Anderson then at, at some point? If, if, do you, or do you think that fight could happen again between you and Anderson? Oh, you know, I, I haven't given that a ton of thought. I don't think that's a likely scenario, but... Uh, uh, you know, that could certainly happen, and they go into a part three, or maybe Vitor gets in there. There's a lot of parity right now, uh, being in the UFC, but particularly being a fan of the UFC. There's never been a better time. Um, that's one of the problems we've got Saturday night. It's, it's part of the excitement. you got the, the welterweight title where nobody's arguing Johnny Hendricks is the number one contender. Every welterweight has stepped aside and said, Johnny, come on through. And that never happens. At 205, we got me, we got Rashad, we got Cormier. Gustafson, obviously, uh, Glover, who is our number one contender. you got all sorts of guys arguing that they're the number one contender. Same thing at 185. Same thing at all the weight class, except 170. This is such a rarity that everybody agrees these are the two best guys. As a fan and as an analyst, how do you see the fight between GSP and Hendrix playing out Saturday? What's your prediction? Well, it's really interesting. It's the hardest fight George has ever had, but it's it's also uh, by far the hardest fight Johnny's ever had. You got Johnny Hendricks. I don't know if you guys uh, know a lot about him, but uh, I followed his career because I'm a wrestler. Uh, he's a winner. 
Johnny Hendricks has won everything he's ever entered since he was 10 years old. High school national championships, uh, you know, state championships, national championships, college national championships. He's a winner. He doesn't know how to lose. And then you got St. Pierre, who's the consummate competitor that absolutely knows how to win, understands strategy, understands judging, understands beating the clock as well as your opponent. So you, you got a guy that doesn't know how to lose against a guy that only knows how to win. And uh, I'm excited to see it. And what's I won't believe anybody can beat George until I see him beat George. I, I, I think the world of John and all that nice stuff, but uh, George is the best fighter I've ever seen. And just how much prep work for this was, was done in conversations with Dan, talking to him about his fight with Rashad? Well, a little bit. I was out uh, to train with Dan for Vitor, and uh, I, I had committed to that before I uh, even had this fight lined up. So it, it ended up uh, working out for both of us. Uh, Dan wanted me specifically because uh, I'm a southpaw, and uh, his plan was to uh, wrestle with Vitor a little bit more, drag him down to the ground. Uh, you know, so we talked about Rashad. He commented on how uh, quick Rashad is and how difficult he is to hit uh, with his movement. Um, those were probably the two, excuse me, the two big takeaways that, that he had to offer. And were those things that you assumed anyways going into that conversation? or? Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, Rashad looks like he moves a lot. He looks like he's hard to hit. Uh, um, it's hard to judge a guy's speed on TV. Dan said he was very fast. Said he hit him with a jab right off the bat. It kind of woke him up. and. Uh, I, those were just his comments. You talked about George being the greatest fighter you've ever seen in turn you fought two of the perennial greats in John and uh, Anderson what makes you say that about George yeah those guys are good um, but you know Georgia uh, George is a guy that I, I don't believe he's ever lost a round uh, at least not in a considerable amount of time he's completely dominant in every area uh, and he's he's been around so long he's fought every kind of fighter he's fought great strikers great grapplers great jiu-jitsu guys and not only does he beat them but he beats them at, at their own game and uh, it, you know, those other guys are, are, are very good, too. So is Jose Aldo and Kane. You know, we, we, there's a lot of good guys in the UFC. But uh, George is probably the least intimidating of the bunch. He's uh, polite. Uh, he's, he's not a jerk. And uh, a, a lot of times he gets graded down because of that. It's, it seems like the, uh, you know, the bigger rascal you are, the, the higher you go in the rankings. But, um, you know, George is, George is a gentleman, but he's also uh, never been in trouble in the octagon. Uh, at least not in recent memory. So it's one of those things that, you know, the fans are like, oh, he's not mean, he's not tough, and you see it as like, dude, he's a fighter. It's a guy that goes in there and wins time after time. You have to be mean to do this. Yeah, Inherently. yeah I don't know if you have to be mean or not, but, uh, you know, he knows how to compete. He, he goes out there, he competes hard. If he's hurt, he pushes through it. If he's tired, he pushes through it. If he gets put in a bad position, he recovers. Uh, you know, he's just a guy that knows how to win. He, he understands strategy. He understands... Uh, the, the purpose is to get your hand raised, period, uh, and, and nothing else. And don't make any apologies or excuses for that. Uh, Rashad said that one of the main uh, inspirations he has for his fight is he can't lose to you because you'll never let him live it down. <laughs> is that true? Probably not. You know, I'm a, I'm a, a pretty good winner, a pretty good loser. I, I understand it's competition. Uh, either way, I'll shake his hand when it's done and we'll walk away. But I, I won't bring it up. I, I don't think I've ever uh, brought it up on a guy in the past and uh, be a little bit of a low blow if I did. What about the other way around? I mean, he's a pretty good uh, trash talker. Are you concerned that yeah, if you do lose, that you won't get it? Uh, that's probably more likely. But, uh, you know, we'll work together. He'll make me go bring him coffee or something like that and remind me of the match. I, I'm not sure. But... Uh, you know, those things are secondary. They're fun to talk about, but they're not motivating factors for me. I just, uh, uh, none of it is. Not, not the money or the attention or anything. I, I just, I like to win. I like to go out and compete and win and feel good about myself for a few days and go back in the gym and start the process all over. Cons considering you already have your next fight booked, what is the biggest motivation against Rashad? Is it just winning or is there something extra there? Because it's a, it's weird because most guys, I don't think there's ever really been a case where somebody knows their fight before win or lose, that's what's going to happen. Yeah, it's a first for me. I, I've never been in the spot. Um, uh, it, yeah, the mo I don't think my motivation ever changes. You know, whether there's something on the line or there's not, it, it's a quick landscape around here. I, I've been the number one contender and, and had those fights taken away from me. You know, won the fight that was announced and, and never got the contract. 
um, it's a it's a moving target and that stuff you know that stuff might help get get you out of bed at five in the morning when you got to go run in the rain and, and you don't want to that's when you use motivation is in the practice room but but on Saturday night I got my process I've, I've done this a lot of times and uh, uh, I don't need any more motivation I just want to win what is your driving force is it more to not lose or more to attain a, a future championship shot uh, definitely to, to attain a, a championship. You know, the reason I got the shots is because I don't say I want the shot. If you're a guy that says he wants the shot, just move him to the end of the line. I, I never said I wanted it. I always said I wanted the championship, and it's it's a huge difference. I never said I wanted to fight Anderson Silva. I said I wanted to beat Anderson Silva, uh, and that's why I became the guy. And whether I did it or not, I, I aspired to. I didn't aspire uh, to be number two. So. Uh, you know, I think there's a difference in thinking between me and a lot of the guys. And um, I think it's fun to talk about, particularly on this week, on the, the 20th anniversary. You know, a lot of guys come in here with an entitlement mentality. Uh, and uh, for some of them, that's, that's the way it was painted. They weren't here. They weren't here during the struggles and, and the dark years and, uh, and to know what it's like. Um, you, you know, this is not something I have to do. Uh, this is something I get to do. And this is something that I want to do. Uh, and uh, it, it's a big deal, man. Where, where our leadership has gotten us has is, is, is been tremendous to, to watch uh, and to be a part of. Do you have a favorite UFC moment? Oh, a favorite moment? Not really, but uh, one that stands out is, is, is when Couture beat Tim Sylvia, uh, particularly because of his age, switching the weight classes. Um, I think that was a particularly inspiring moment, but. Uh, you know, I have a short-term memory like we all do. I see a good fight and go, that's the greatest fight I've ever seen. And I, I forget about one that was as short as a week ago. But uh, with that said, the, the Jones-Gustafson fight uh, gets my vote for the best fight of all time, if, uh, if that's what you meant. Joe, you've been doing a lot of TV, obviously, um, kind of getting your, you know, a lot of, lot of different oars in the water. Do you see yourself continuing that or maybe doing more of an administrative role with the UFC a lot of people think of you as maybe a future Dana White you know at some point in your career do you see that or do you think that far down the road um well I mean Dana's the master and it's a it's a huge compliment to be compared to him but uh there's never been anybody that could keep up with Dana that could work as hard as Dana that would sacrifice what Dana's willing to sacrifice uh and I'm not any different uh he's my idol I copy him in many ways uh but I'm no Dana White, and I, I do appreciate you making that comparison. That's uh, 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 as flattering as Hoist Gracie grabbing me a minute ago. So thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. See you guys.